technology 1975 on 1st January. I had spent six years in America, five years at California Institute of Technology where I did my master's and PhD, and one year of postdoctoral work at Bell Laboratories in New Jersey. I hadn't left any technology at Makerere, but there I was. I was confronted with really a new structure. They said it was faculty of technology. It was half finished. Building materials were everywhere. The contractor had abandoned the site. On entering the technology, we had UNESCO UNDP experts and a few Ugandans. When we joined uh, uh, the faculty, uh, the present uh, location, the home of the, of the college was under construction. We were having lectures scattered throughout the campus. We had uh, lectures and practicals at uh, Uganda Technical College, Kiambugo. The exams were every two terms and that meant that you had to work continuously without relenting. In 1978, in October, the liberation was started. It was tension everywhere. And at that time, March was the end of the academic year. Students were taking their final exam. And as they did their final exam in March, the war was going on around them. And I, for one, I gave my paper on 8th of April, and I ran away. This is the tension under which we are working. But now the situation came in 79, when the UNDP and UNESCO project dwindled. The government of the day had to call in Egyptian what? lecturers to come in on a crash program, to complete some courses. It was a hard year. I remember when I joined, we had an engineering, electrical engineering class, where the current Minister of State was younger. He was my first student. There were nine in the class. And there was one lady, Senoga. The entire faculty had three women. One of them is Honorable Azuba now, Minister of Works. There were small classes, very intelligent people, selected across the country, very nice to teach. Conditions were hard, but they were working hard. They inspired us. Before I became dean, I was head of the Department of Civil Engineering for six years, 93 to 99. Then from 99 to 2002, I assumed the deanship uh, of the uh, Faculty of Technology then, working with my fellow heads of departments, one of the main tasks ahead of me was to attract research funding, which would promote the growth of uh, the high brass techno staff members to PhD levels. And I'm very proud at, at this moment that many of those who are, including me, the, the director, the principal, we are formerly our students. I'm the principal of the College of Engineering, Design, Art and Technology here at Makere University. Uh, I've been serving this capacity for six years now. Uh, and I'm also an uh, alumnus of this college. I studied uh, civil engineering um, and graduated way back uh, early 90. This college is the College of Engineering, Design, Art and Technology and it is uh, comprised of three schools. There's the School of Engineering, the School of the Built Environment and the Margaret Trow School of Industrial Fine Art. The college has um, about 3,500 students and of those about 300 are graduate students. So it means the undergraduates are about 3,200. I use about because the numbers keep on fluctuating. 
in terms of number of staff the college has also about uh, 160 academic staff but also we have people who provide services teaching services on part-time basis but we also have uh, administrative staff as well as support staff uh, this gallery was an idea um, in the 60s by Jonathan Kingdon, together with his friend uh, Gregory Marova, who were very active in the 60s. And the, uh, this school, having started in 1940, had accumulated a, a lot of work from students, from staff, and there was no storage space, there was no space to show this work. And it was very important that a gallery of this nature you know, get started. They looked for funds, those two, from the Gulbenkian Foundation in the UK, which is a charity that you know, supports culture. So they found the funds, they got an architect from Nairobi, and the, the, this uh, gallery was, was created and it was launched by the then president of Uganda, Apollo Milton Obote. And uh, um, for the purpose of showing work, for the purpose of being the center, a center for culture, visual culture in the university. I think a position has appeared since, since that time. Yeah, so we've had a lot of activity, many activities, and the, um, uh, in spite of the financial strain that we're experiencing, we still do you know, some commendable work. We host exhibitions like from local and international you know, um, artists. This gallery is very particular. It, we, we, we insist on those exhibitions that have an academic value, have an educational value. We have a visionary vice-chancellor. He's a man of vision, you know, because he's thinking of putting together a, a Macquarie University Museum. And he gave us the task of, of writing the project for the museum. A few weeks ago, we presented to management. And the museum is very good news for us here in the gallery because, you know, this is the starting point for the university museum, you know, in, in, in a broad sense. So we, we hope to grow. We need to grow. We must grow because, uh, like I said, our storage space is very tight. We need to build, expand on the space. We need, uh, we need to have permanent exhibitions. We need to have changing exhibitions. We need to have staff, researchers, you know, uh, and, and, and in a permanent, on permanent terms, you know, um, director, curator, and so on. Uh, that is our dream, and I think it's not far-fetched to think that that should happen, you know, not many years from now. I, I think the major achievements we have registered as a college is that uh, this college has now clocked in terms of technology, it has clocked 50 years. And also in terms of the art gallery, we have clocked 50 years. So uh, out there, the, the products of the college are visible. You know, in terms of uh, people who have gone through the college, people who have served here, people in various positions of government, and also in the private sector. Um, the college has also produced uh, things that are out there in the market, one of them is the, the, the Chila EV car project. Kira Motors Corporation is a state enterprise that uh, is championing value addition in the automotive industry with government of Uganda and Macquarie University as shareholders. The very first project was the design of the Kira EV. It was designed, uh, made and launched in November 2011 by none other than His Excellency the President of the Republic of Uganda, Yori Kaguta Museveni. Of course, we, we were very excited and very elated at the fact that not only did he come to launch it, but he, I could say, risked to actually take a ride in this car. But the fact that he took the step to step into the car and allow to be driven in a car that not even his own people had tested before, that made us realize that he actually had a lot of faith in us. I was a built and designed the Kayola Solar Bus an iconic solar-powered electric bus, the first of its kind in Africa. It's as a result of the work that we have done in uh, cutting-edge vehicle technology, especially in the space of uh, renewable energy. The vehicle design project was located at the old building of the Faculty of Engineering, and 
we worked downstairs in the basement where we had the little green car actually putting it back inside every time we had exhibitions was interesting because we had to break down part of the building so the car would get in and out but yeah right now we are in in tinder kira motors corporation is located in Intinda and we have a much bigger space we've actually been able to build the bus from here the kayola solar bus the kira ev s and yeah, we look forward to even going to a much bigger space in Jinja. The uh, government of Uganda, uh, April of 2018, approved a ro the roadmap uh, and the seed fund for the commercialization of the Kira electric vehicle project and the establishment of the Kira vehicle plant at the Jinja Industrial and Business Park, where the government of Uganda gave us 100 acres of land for the construction of the plant. As Kira Motors, our dream is to, to have as many Ugandans participate in the development of automotive technology. We'd like to look at the progressive development of local content in these vehicles. Uh, I'll also give you an example of uh, marker pads, which is, a, which is an innovation that started from here. Uh, and uh, the, the innovation is in producing cheap, uh, recyclable uh, pads that can be used by the majority of Ugandan girls who are in school and who cannot afford expensive uh, pads. Uh, so there have been a number of innovations and we are really continuing to innovate. Um, we thank the partners, we thank the development partners, we thank the government of Uganda for investing. As we all know, uh, technology is the way to go and we can't afford to lag behind. Uh, countries that have developed have put a lot of emphasis on programs that, uh, are like the ones we have here, you know. So we need to work together to make sure that we serve the population that requires our services. There are several equipment that we could be needing, but currently, if I'm to look, like a, to look at a cost unit like electromagnetics, we need microwave benches. Currently, we have two microwave benches, and we are looking at a class of 50 students. So you are basically having a group of 25, 25, so the equipment cannot be enough. We need to have uh, these laboratories maybe more equipped. We need to have uh, students encouraged to do more practicals, so that by the time we live here, or by the time they live here, they have more of that practical experience, not just the knowledge, the class knowledge they get. Going ahead also, we need to look at the infrastructure that we have and expand it, the classrooms, we need more classrooms, we need uh, more laboratories, we need uh, offices for staff, and then also areas for carrying out innovative research. We also need to expand on our establishment to make sure that the positions are filled so that the student staff ratios are improved. Uh, also, we need to uh, do with less of the part-time staff. Okay, the other addition on the vision for the future is for us as a university to uh, churn out products which can be commercialized. So at, uh, at the end of it all, what we do here as research is transferred and carried out in the field so that uh, the, the, the research is visible out there in the communities and is solving challenges out there in the, uh, to solve the people's uh, requirements. Thank you.